In this video, we'll discuss the railing tools. We'll look at the railing defaults and specifying railing types. We'll look at how to adjust the rail style, the height of railings, rail profiles, and how to do railing pony walls and railings that follow stairs, including rake walls. I'm going to begin in this completed plan in Chief Architect. We're going to add a deck onto the back of this house and look at some of the different options we have for railings. The railing tools can be found under Build, Railing and Deck, or you can find the railing parent tool in your architectural toolbar here. The options we have initially are straight and curved general railing tools and straight and curved deck railing tools. The deck railing tools are used for the exterior perimeter of the deck room. Using these walls will automatically create a deck room complete with deck framing. Other than that, there is no functional difference between the railing and the deck railing options. You can always change your mind later. For instance, if you use the straight railing tool to create a room and realize that you want that room to be a deck, I can just open the room and change the room type. Now if we double click on our straight railing tool in the toolbar, we can open our railing defaults. Off to the right, we can see a preview of our default railing. When I use the railing tool, this is the style of the railing I will draw. Now let's take a closer look at this dialog. As you may have noticed, the options in this dialog look the same as when we edit walls. Railings and walls are essentially the same thing. But when you mark a wall as a railing, like you can see right here, it opens up additional options for editing this wall, which are specific to a railing. Any wall can become a railing, and any railing can revert to a normal wall simply by toggling this checkbox. Since walls and railings are so similar, we're going to skip over the first six dialogues. You can learn more about these in the video on editing walls. Just know that all the options you have for walls, you also have for railings, including roof controls. But we're going to skip down to the first of our three panels specific for editing railings. The Rail Style panel. This allows us to specify the basics of what type of railing we're drawing. Whether this railing is using newels and balusters, is a solid railing, which would make it a half wall, whether it is open without balusters, open with a middle rail, or whether we're using panels. When we select panels, that means down in our Newell's Balusters panel, we're going to be specifying a panel type rather than a baluster type. I'm going to select the baluster option. Then we can choose what the newels or posts are doing. Does the rail pass over the newel? Does the post extend up to the ceiling? Does it extend to the ceiling with an automatic supporting beam? Or does the rail attach to the newel post? The last option is the only option that allows us to manually specify the height of the newels or posts. For all other options, the newel or post will automatically follow either the height of the overall railing or the ceiling height of the room. I'm going to select Rail to Post because I want the newels to be higher than the railing, but not all the way up to the ceiling. Next, we have options for what should happen when the railing meets the wall. Do you need a half post against the wall, a full post, or no post at all? For both, start and end of the wall. Then we can specify if we're using a top and bottom rail, and if so, 
How far off the floor should the bottom rail start? And the final option on this rail style panel allows the railing to automatically follow the contours of the terrain. Such as when we're drawing a fence, or follow stairs, so we can draw our railings manually, rather than specifying the railing from within the stairs dialog. Next, we have the Newell's Balusters panel. In this panel, we can specify the height of the overall railing, as well as the height of the posts if we've checked Rail to Post in the Rail Style panel. Then we can specify the style of posts, or newels, and how far apart they are, as well as the style of either balusters or panels sitting between the posts or newels. For each of these options, we can either choose a basic option in the drop down here, or we can click on the library and open up the library and find more style options. And the final panel, specific to railings in this dialog, is the Rails panel. Here, we can specify the dimensions of the top and bottom rail, as well as the middle rail and beam, if we've chosen those options in the Rail Style panel. If we select the top rail, you can see the preview of the molding profile we're using here, and the width and height of that railing here. If we want to choose a different rail profile, we can select Replace and select a different molding in the library. I'm going to select OK, and that will update my railing default. Any railing I draw using the straight or curved railing tool will now follow what we've just specified but I can still open any individual railing after it is drawn if I want something other than the default railing style. The deck railing tools have a different set of defaults. Some people will use the normal railing defaults for their interior railings and the deck railing for the exterior. But today we're going to use the straight railing tool for our deck. Drawing railings is the same as drawing walls. We'll click and drag to draw the railing. We'll need to have a completely enclosed room if we want to have the floor platform. Because we didn't use the deck railing tool, it did not automatically create a deck, but rather an unspecified room type. I'm going to open this room and name it deck which will create the deck framing rather than traditional floor framing. Now as you can see, I have a roof over just part of this deck. That portion needs to have posts that extend upward to support the load of the roof. So I'm going to use my break wall tool to divide this railing into two sections. Then I'll open the section that needs to bear the load of the roof under rail style. I'm going to select post to beam. Then under rails, I'm going to double check the width and height of that beam to make sure it's strong enough to support my roof. Now as you can see, the stairs leading off this deck do not currently have a railing. So I have two options. First, I could open these stairs, and you can see we have the same three panels for editing the railing, though the first of these looks a little different. The railing panel allows us to specify if we have a railing on the right or left of this staircase for open signs, or when against a wall. The Newell's, Balusters, and Rails panels are identical to when editing a railing wall.
The second option is to draw a railing over the top of the stairs, open the railing, and under Rail Style, specify that it follow the stairs. You can use this same option when doing a rake wall, a pony wall with a railing on top and a solid wall on the bottom that follows the slope of the stairs. To do that, I'm going to move the railing right next to the stairs, open it up. Under wall types specifically, it is a pony wall set at the height of the railing off the floor to 6 inches. And again, make sure under rail style that follow stairs is selected. Then when I select OK, you can see the result. This option only works when the railing is butted up right against the edge of the stairs. If I pan around here, you can see a couple of more examples of railing pony walls for the front porch and for the outer fence. Again, if I double click to open the fence in front, you can see under wall types, I have a railing set as the main wall type and a brick wall set as the lower wall type, specifying it as a pony wall. And on the general panel, we can see the main difference between a fence and a railing, other than it following the terrain, which is that it does not have any room definition. So these walls will not create a room and cannot be used to generate a floor or ceiling platform, which is perfect for a fence. As you can see, using the railing tool, you can create a wide variety of different railing styles for your plan.